All right, hello everybody. Uh, I just want to uh, thank Twilio. Uh, this is my second year here, and it's been a lot of fun. I had high expectations, and they definitely delivered. Uh, so my name is Kristen, and today I'm going to tell you a personal story. Uh, so my day job has me working on hardware and firmware designs for new little bits modules, uh, but something I like to do outside of that is to use little bits as a tool to make new projects. So in this case, to help make the Internet of Things relevant for me. So I'm going to start with a quick intro to little bits, give you a background on the project I made, and then delve into the hardware and software implementation. What is little bits? It's an open source library of electronic modules, and they snap together with tiny magnets for learning and inventing. All of the modules are color coded. So blue provides the power. Pink input modules take something from the outside world and convert it to a little bit signal. And green output modules take a little bit signal and convert that to something we can see, hear, feel. The orange wire modules are everything in between. So this makes it really easy for people to build simple circuits and inventive projects in uh, seconds. So for example, you can take a blue power module and snap that to a bright LED, and you've made a light bulb. Now if you snap a slide switch and a light sensor into that circuit, you've made a light-controlled nightlight. So Little Bits makes learning about and making with electronics more fun and accessible. One of those orange wire modules is the cloud bit, and this is our gateway to the Internet of Things. So once you provision this to your local Wi-Fi, uh, you then have the ability to send and receive voltages uh, over the web a few different ways. So one of those ways is through the Little Bits Cloud HTTP API. And if you snap the cloud bit into your Little Bits circuits, there's a new realm of possibilities that opens up. So now we can go into a little bit of the background of my project. All right, my qualms about the Internet of Things mainly stem from my own inability to choose. There are so many devices that connect you to the Internet. Um, a few months ago, I read this interesting article from Matt Turk, and he and his colleague put up this visual landscape. And just looking at the applications layer is overwhelming. I mean, you can't even read this from the back. So, how do I choose what I want? And some of the questions I found myself asking were, do I have a problem that I can solve using IoT? Um, how can I make sure that I choose something that's relevant in my life? And these devices can help make my life easier, but what if it doesn't really solve a pro uh, I, what if I can't find a solution to a problem that I have myself? So this is where the cloud bit becomes important. Um, instead of getting something new that might solve a problem for many, I can find a problem of one and solve it creatively. So I can hack or retrofit things that I already own and really make the Internet of Things relevant in my life. So what is it that I can make? Well, like most people that live in a city, I rent an apartment. I don't own a house and I, I can't have a security system like a lot of companies advertise for houses, but I thought, why not make my own alarm system out of little bits? I can hack things that are in my apartment already and use little bits to make them connected to the internet. And little bits already has a library of sensors, and the cloud bit would allow me to read and send analog values to and from my circuits over the web. So that's how this whole project got started. I decided to um, start with my room first to prototype the idea, because then everything could be scaled to the rest of my apartment. So this was my game plan. I wanted to capture specific data from the sensors in my room. So temperature to see if my window was open, uh, light to see if my bedside drawer was open, and pressure to see if my coin bank was in its place, and uh, a bend sensor to see the status of my door. So I also wanted to send signals to my room to set a buzzer off or a speaker off as an alarm. Now, I wanted to see all of this info on a nice dashboard online and also get SMS notifications if something happened. So now I'll show you how I implemented the hardware and software of my project. Let's start with hardware. So these are the pictures of the actual circuits around my room. And 
uh, this is the temperature sensor uh, in Fahrenheit mode connected to a cloud bit and that's placed on my windowsill. This is my bedside drawer and inside I used a light sensor and a cloud bit so that when I open the drawer, the light sensor would detect the ambient light in the room. And this is a, an awesome coin bank that I found at Disney. <laughs> Uh, I use a pressure sensor here, and you might notice that there's another orange module in this picture. Uh, that's a wireless receiver, and I'll get into that after the next slide. So this is my door, and you'll see the bend sensor um, connected to a wireless transmitter, and that transmitter sends a signal that it receives to the wireless receiver that we saw in the previous slide. And I did this because um, I don't have an outlet near my doors, uh, but I wanted my cloud bit to always be plugged in. So uh, I decided to combine the circuits together. Uh, and the last part is um, the buzzer, which is uh, the green module you'll see connected to one of the uh, cloud bits there, and that acts as my alarm. All right, the software part was a nice challenge for me. Uh, since I'm familiar with some of the tools that I ended up using, but I don't use them very often. So I picked Node.js as my runtime environment since I'm used to it and I'm familiar with JavaScript. And I'm not an expert, but I knew that it'd be easy to integrate both the Little Bits API and the Twilio API so that I could uh, accomplish what I wanted. And I did some searching around and I came across uh, Shopify's dashing framework. And it was written in Ruby, but I also found a port to Node.js. Their dashing framework allows you to create sleek dashboards like this uh, by modifying the existing widgets or creating some of your own. Uh, this seemed easy enough to use and it was a good fit for what I was trying to do, so I decided to use uh, the dashing JS. All right, so let's check out what my room dashboard looks like. This is just a, a screenshot. Uh, so in my app, I modified some widgets and created some new ones. And the widgets get the values from my cloud bits using the Little Bits API and then display the data. So the first two widgets you'll see um, tells me the time and the weather of where I live. And then the rest of the widgets are the ones that talk to my cloud bits. So my room was 72 degrees at the time. Uh, my coin bank was there. You'll see that my door was closed the drawer was closed and the last widget I could uh, click to turn the alarm on and off. So in the background, I set up some thresholds uh, on these values so that if there was a state change for my door, my drawer, or my coin bank, then I would get an SMS notification uh, from my Twilio number. And so after I got this to a nice working state, I deployed it uh, on Heroku and connected it to my domain so I could just uh, view everything online. But since my whole setup is across the country, I created a dashboard specifically for the demo um, and the example circuits I have up here with me today. So up here I have a podium, uh, at the podium I have uh, the same circuits that you see in the picture. So uh, starting from the bottom, I have a few different input modules. Uh, each connected to a cloud bit. So we have a pressure sensor, a temperature sensor, uh, the roller switch, and that um, will simulate the door being opened and closed. Uh, and also uh, there's a buzzer on the end of that cloud bit for the alarm. Uh, the next one has a light sensor and the circuit at the top has a motion trigger, but I'll get to that one later. So let me pull up the dashboard I made for these circuits. Okay, so this is what I have deployed. And you'll notice that the first two widgets are the same. Currently it's 5.06. Uh, we've got the forecast for San Francisco. Uh, we have the room temperature. And then the rest of the widgets talk to the other cloud bits that I have up here. So now, um, I actually would like to see if I could get a volunteer to come up here and help me interact with these circuits. Anybody? Uh, you in the blue? No. 
<laughs> hey, how's it going? What's your name? Jesse. Jesse, Kristen. Oh, I met you earlier. <laughs> awesome. So this is Jesse, everybody. Uh, so I'm going to have you interact with these circuits up here while everybody pays attention to the dashboard to see uh, the interactions uh, in real time. So let's have you start with the temperature sensor. So that's this one up here. I don't know if your hands are a little bit warm, but if you put your finger on that chip, we'll see if we can get the temperature to go up a few degrees. There we go. A few degrees. It is kind of cold in here. Okay, so now let's look at the pressure sensor. So if you want to hit that pressure sensor, put some pressure on it. There we go. And release it. Cool. And now let's skip to the light sensor. So it's kind of dark up here, but I'm going to pull out my flashlight. And then you can cover that light sensor right there, back and forth. Awesome. OK. Now, the last one, I want you to pretend that you've opened my door and hold that roller switch down. Yeah, good. Ah, uh, the alarm should have gone off. <laughs> Live demos. <laughs> so let's see. Let's reload this page. Make sure everything's going. OK, if you hit that switch again, just hold it down. Nope. All right, well, what should have happened is this. The alarm should have gone on. <laughs> And I should have gotten a text message um, from my Twilio number telling me to check the status of my dashboard. Um, here. Yeah, here you go. Check your security dashboard. Your door is opened. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you. Give it a hand for Jesse. <laughs> OK. Well, so now that we've seen how that uh, that worked. I can show you how easy it is to add a widget that talks to the cloud bit and will notify me with Twilio SMS. All right, now if you remember that picture of the circuits I have up here, the first one was a motion trigger connected to a cloud bit. That's the one that we're going to connect to our dashboard. And the first thing you want to do is visit the little bit's cloud control to connect your cloud bit to your Wi Fi. Um, now, I've done this to save some time. And you'll see in the cloud bits that I own, I have one called Motion Trigger. And in order to talk to the right cloud bit, you need some information that you can find in your Settings tab. All the way down at the bottom, you'll see you have a device ID and an access token. Uh, so in my app, I use a library file. So I already have my access token saved. But I'm going to copy this device ID and navigate to my workspace and open up that library file where I store all of my data. Okay, I can scroll to the bottom. Oh, it looks like I've already got it added. So what I wanted to do was add a new variable for this motion trigger. Um, this one I called motion ID. And this is the same device ID that I found in my little bits dashboard. So we can save that. All right, now in the dashing framework, there are two main files that you want to edit uh, in order to add another widget. Uh, the first is a job file, and this is where you put the code that you want executed to get your data from the little bits API, um, and also where you specify where that data goes to. And the second file is called the uh, dashboard EJS file, and this is what's rendered when you actually visit that deployed page. So let's make a new job in my jobs folder. And I'm going to call it motion.job.js. And in order to make things a little bit 
easier. I'm going to copy some code from my pressure sensor job and copy it into my motion job. OK, so you'll see that I have some requires here. And I declare some variables. The one that we want to pay attention to is called CloudBit options. And uh, this is the variable that we use uh, when we make a request to the Cloud API. So um, you'll see here in the headers, we have our authorization. This is where your access token goes. And then in the path, this is what you want to change to specify which CloudBit you want to talk to. So I'm going to change this variable to motion ID. That's the one that I just added. And at the bottom of my file, I have a few helper functions. Uh, the first is parse data. So this gets data from the, the, the little bits cloud API, um, parses the JSON, and returns the uh, percent amplitude from 0 to 99. The next function is called text me. And this uses the Twilio API to send a text message. And the last function is called set alarm, and this is, um, this is what sets the alarm off on the, the cloud bit with the buzzer. All right, so my main function I called get cloud bit value. And here we make a request with those cloud bit options that we specified before. And when we get data, this uh, count uh, along with parse data parses that uh, JSON data from the cloud and returns the input values that the cloud bit sees into this variable called cloudval, right here. So uh, with those cloud values, we want to send that data to the widget. And we need to use a dashings function called send event. And send event you need to specify the name of that widget that you want to send it to, and also the data that you want to send it. So I'm going to change this name to demo motion for our new widget. And we can keep this the same. Uh, the value is cloudval. All right, so that's our job file. And now I'm going to open up that EJS file. And each one of these list items is a, a widget on the page that, uh, that we, we saw before. So I'm going to copy um, this meter list item as a template, because I want to see my data as a meter. And I'm going to add it at the bottom here. All right, so we can change this name to demo motion. This has to match what we use in our job file. We can keep the data view as meter. Um, how much pressure? I'm going to ask, did something move? And we'll save that file. And so uh, dashing also allows you to run this locally. And so I'm going to use the dashing dash js start uh, command to start my app. And you see that it's running on port 3030. So I'm going to navigate to my local host, port 3030. And hopefully, if all goes well, we should see a new widget pop up. There we go. Something move. OK. Um, now, again, if this demo <laughs> works, uh, I should be able to move my hand over the motion trigger and um, that data should be sent to the widget. There we go. Now, another part of this demo was adding the um, set alarm function and the uh, text me function. But I left that out because we only have a few more minutes um, in, the, in the talk. But uh, I'm going to push my code onto GitHub after this, and then you guys can see uh, you know, how, I, how I made my dashboard and see how you can customize your own. OK. So um, let's go back to my slides.
Oh. All right, so um, this dashboard was just a way for someone, um, in this case me, to make uh, the Internet of Things relevant in their lives. And we have a bunch of examples in the community, uh, the Little Bits community, where people have done this for themselves. And so I just pulled a few from uh, the community to, to show you guys. So I've seen at least three different projects that involve machines, uh, like laundry machines, uh, and notifications by text or email when those machines are done. So you can go about your business without the worry of forgetting your clothes in the washer or dryer because you'll be notified when the machines are done. And this next project I really like, um, I, I thought it was really cool and useful. Um, this comes from somebody called, uh, somebody in Pune, India. So Miland, he likes to drink fresh buttermilk in the morning and the Indian way to do this uh, involves churning curd to get the fat out. And it's usually done with a wooden stir and a rope that's pulled back and forth um, to, to churn the curd and goes for about 20 minutes. But Milland automated the process using little bits and the cloud bit. He called it the butter bot. And it automatically goes off at a certain time every morning uh, so Milland can enjoy his buttermilk without as much effort as before. <laughs> And so I, I hope that you guys could see that with the ease of little bits, I was able to take ordinary things um, like my coin bank, my door, my drawer, and connect them to the Internet of Things. Uh, the project was a way for me to hack everyday objects and make them connected, but also a way to make the Internet of Things relevant for me. And combining little bits with other tools and easy-to-use APIs like Twilio's enabled me, and I hope will enable you, to start making and find creative ways to connect your life to the Internet of Things. Um, thanks for listening to my story. I hope you guys are enjoying Signal so far. Uh, if you have any questions, um, I'll be around. Feel free to you know, come up to me and uh, talk to me. So thank you.